The stock market is up over 20% in 2023 alone and is just days away from hitting all-time high prices. Everybody's getting rich and the stock market party is back on. Woo! But wait, if the prices are at all-time highs, why would I want to invest right now? Isn't it like waiting for all the sales to end and then buying the new iPhone? Come on, Jake. That sounds stupid. I understand where you're coming from, but that's not actually how investing works. Uh, okay, here, let me show you. Look at this chart. Do you notice something? This is the S&P 500 index, widely regarded as the best tracker of the performance of the US stock market. And, and while it's not a straight line, over time, it simply goes up and to the right. In fact, over the last 100 years, the S&P 500 has returned over 10% per year. Well, this might not seem impressive to mean stock investors and crypto 100x gains. Trust me, this is the most reliable long-term investment strategy. And simply, the stock market always goes up. But that doesn't mean you should invest right now. If the stock market is at an all-time high price, it's gotta be coming down pretty soon, right? Wrong. In fact, the stock market regularly hits all-time high prices. RBC Global Asset Management just did a study in 2020 of the US stock market and found that from 1950 to 2020, the stock market hit an all-time high price 1,130 times. Yes, over a thousand times it hit an all-time high. And that's an average of 16 all-time highs per year. This means investing right now isn't investing in something that's too expensive. It's simply investing in something that's gonna grow to new all-time highs at an average pace of 16 times per year. So to say, Jake, it's too expensive and I can't invest right now, is just simply not true. And RBC went on to showcase that returns for someone that only invested at all-time highs. They are the worst in market timer of all time. They only invested all-time highs. Even over rolling five-year periods, they had 10% returns annually, which is crazy. So even the dumbest person in the worst market timer can still get crazy returns over a long period of time by just simply investing in the market regularly. That's why there's a saying that says, time in the market is better than timing the market. But before you go out and start investing right now, it is important to take one more step. You need to define what you're investing for. Because if you don't do this, you could make a catastrophic mistake that could cost you thousands of dollars this year alone. So it's important to get this right. So when you're investing money, there's really three main buckets to consider. You've got your short-term investments that are under five years. You've got medium term investments that are somewhere between five and 10 years. And, and then you have long-term investments, 10 plus years uh, or retirement investing. If you're investing for less than five years, you probably don't wanna risk putting it in the stock market. There are many five year periods where the market drops and doesn't actually recover. So you could even lose some of your money. No, it's better to put it in a safe investment account, something like a high yield savings account, a certificate of deposit, a CD, or something like US Treasury bills. My favorite place is high yield savings account. It's the easiest. And in fact, that's where I'm saving the down payment for my house. And you can check out the top high yield savings accounts in this video up here at the top. But if you're doing short-term investments, don't risk it. Now, when you're doing medium-term investments, something between five and 10 years, you might be willing to risk a little bit more and maybe put some of that money in the stock market. Maybe not, maybe not all of it. Maybe you're totally not comfortable with that, but it is something to consider. Longer time horizons have a better chance of going up in value. Now, what most of you are probably doing that watching this video, you're thinking about longer term investments, investing for retirement, investing for 10 plus years. So when investing for 10 plus years, it's almost a no brainer to put that money in the stock market. As we mentioned earlier, the stock market has averaged 10% annual returns over the last 100 years. And when that number compounds year after year after year, that can literally equal millions of dollars by the time you retire. But how do you actually invest in the stock market? I mentioned earlier the S&P 500 index as sort of the benchmark for performance of the entire stock market. Did you know you could buy the entire S&P 500 index within a single investment? It's called an index fund. Now, index funds are simply investments that own all of the stocks with inside an index. So for the S&P 500, it would own all 500 and there's a little over 500 stocks in there and it's market cap weighted just like the index. So the bigger companies have a bigger share of the pie 
and you have instant diversification. Some examples of S&P 500 index funds would be Vanguard's VOO, or Schwab's SWPPX, or Fidelity's FXAIX. Those funds own the S&P 500. Now, not only do index funds match the performance of a market index, which is basically the stock market, but they have extremely low fees, like 0.0 something percent, and they beat out most actively managed funds, right? So mutual funds that are trying to outperform these benchmarks can't do it over 20 plus year periods. So they are the best investment. In fact, the godfather of investing, Warren Buffett himself, said the best thing someone can do is buy an S&P 500 index fund. So listen, if the best investor of all time says to buy an index fund, you do it. And waiting is a loser's game. Remember, time in the market is better than timing the market. Yes, the stock market is expensive right now. But remember, today's prices is tomorrow's deal. And waiting too long can actually cost you a huge amount of money. But where should you invest into an index fund? That's what I talk about right here in this video when I talk about my favorite retirement account, the Roth IRA, and how you could grow it to millions of dollars of tax-free money by retirement. Check it out.